Hello, my name is John and this is Motivation Theory Running. And as always, I'm here to give you an update. It's not it's not always weekly, but it's it's uh, at least bi-weekly update of weight loss, training, what's going on in my life. A lot of you like to know these things, so I like to give you what you like. Yeah. Ultra Marathon Training Week 4 of the year 2022. That just doesn't roll off the tongue. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm recovering from COVID quite well. I don't even have any kind of residual effects at this point. Um, and I, I think I'm out the other side pretty good. I don't have anything that's kind of lagging. The fatigue is gone. Uh, no congestion. Uh, so I, I'm lucky. I'm lucky and fortunate and I'm happy to be uh, first off that I didn't have any kind of major issues with it. And secondly, that nothing's been lingering. So like I said, I'm in week four of ultra marathon training this year, starting my third year since my comeback. So it's that time of year again. It is New Year's time. It's time to set goals and resolutions and all of these things you want to achieve for 2020. And like all of you, I have done the same thing. And one of my goals that I talked about in a previous video was to get back into ultra running. And as I promised all of you who are subscribers to this channel that I would document and be pretty transparent with all of the struggles and the things that I have to go through. Hello everyone, my name is John and this is Motivation Theory. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about week one, week one, how to go and what did I do to get through it and what I'm gonna do in the future to continue to be healthy and continue my weight loss. 2020 was my comeback the beginning in January. And uh, if you're following this channel, you've been able to follow my entire journey over the last two years. This is the third year and I'm excited because this is some new things that the plan that I started planning, you know, two years ago is, is coming to fruition. Kind of the first year was kind of building out helicopter going out. The first year was, was building out that the kind of base, getting my body used to the mileage. And second year was uh, really kind of executing that and uh, building a little bit more mileage and uh, adding more ultras in there, getting my nutrition and everything squared away. And in year three is, you know, well, last year was a little more speed. Well, this year will be a little bit more speed and uh, adding the distance of a hundred miles, my first hundred mile. And I, and I think I've gone through and counted all of the ultras. I've passed 20 at this point. It's coming together. I'm feeling confident. Uh, it's exciting to get that kind of nervousness in, in you again, when you, when you have a distance you've never run before and I've never run a hundred before. So it's kind of giving me that butterflies, nervousness, uh, over planning OCD type thing that I get when I'm, uh, researching races. So, uh, yeah, that's what I got going on, but I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about kind of the end of last year in the beginning of this year and kind of what I have coming, uh, obviously I have a race coming this week, but, and in April and then in September, so the end of last year, I ended the year with the JFK 50. And then, you know, if you look at my mileage, uh, JFK 50 was on in uh, the uh, last or the second to last week in November, actually on uh, November 20th, uh, ran that race. Great week, 61 and a quarter miles that week. Obviously recovery week the next week, 11 and, and some change. Still recovering the week after that, uh, 12 and a half. And then I started to kind of ramp mileage up again, 35 and a half, um, the first week of December, 32, and the second week, 40 in the third week, 60 in the uh, last week of December. And I was feeling really strong and then COVID hit and taking care of my family. And then, uh, so that first week was, you know, just under 20, second week of January, just over 16, 16 and a half, uh, third week, 38. You know, as I was coming out of COVID 36 uh, last week, and then this week is race week. So uh, I'm about, I think I'm at 121 miles for January. Last January, I was at 200 miles before this race for January, but I got 20 hours of running in this January. Uh, and I started trying to do the math from like, you know, November, December, or uh, yeah, October, November, December. Uh, of last year and, you know, of 2020 into 2021. So that three month period, there was only 
maybe 10, eight to 10 hours of difference between um, 2020 into 2021 and that IC8 and this year, so 2021 into 2022. So I was thinking I was a lot behind and at least hours because I ran really well last year in the IC8. I felt really strong and then kind of messed up my nutrition a little bit, got dehydrated. Uh, the dehydration was the weird thing for me. It's, it's, it's always weird for me when I'm racing on, on cold days, racing hard. So, um, I, I think I'm where I need to be. I'm feeling calm. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling confident. Uh, I had entered in originally for the, um, groundhog day version. So it's on groundhogs day. And they always have one where you had to pick one of the two loops. There's an eight hour loop. And then there's a 4.7 mile loop. And if you choose to do that race, there's the, the race everyone else is in where you can choose to do any loops you want. And then if you choose, you have to declare it ahead of time and you kind of race in the Groundhog Day version of it. Um, I was choosing to do that, but now I'm thinking after all the math and stuff that I've been figuring out, I might just want to go back to just the regular race uh, and mix and match because I don't know how the mud is going to be out there. And I can change it later, like if I decide... I'm going to do the long loop. I can do the long loop. And if I want to change, I'll just remove me from the Groundhog Day version and put me into the regular version with everyone else. We're going to get two days of rain prior to the race. It was a sloppy, muddy mess last year with lots of just big, giant puddles along the path, which made it very hard to have to constantly stop and, and run around them. Uh, and, and they weren't easy to get around because there's, I mean, they're taking you way off the trail. Uh, you can just kind of go through them, but then you run the whole day with like really gross, nasty, muddy feet, and that's just no fun. Also got my Billy Yang um, Pro Path Projects hat right here. So rocking that. I'm probably gonna rock. It's a really, it's a, it's a nice hat. It's a well-made uh, hat. It's light, airy. You can probably see the the mesh in it. So I'm digging this. Never really been into these type of hats, but you know, might might be into it now. I like the way that, that, that it feels. So, all right, weight loss, weight loss for uh, the year so far. I'm down to 209. I fluctuate about four pounds in a day, and uh, I'm, I'm about 209. I need to get down to 190, and 190 is super skinny for me, uh, super light. But I want to race this year at a lighter weight. I don't want to carry this extra, you know, 15, 20 pounds around. I mean, again, I'm not a big, I'm not a heavy looking guy. I mean, most people look at me like they don't even know that uh, I could lose that much more weight. Um, but I'm more of a stocky, beefier type guy. I carry, what is going on? We've got fire, we've got fire trucks, helicopters. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm making progress, not as quickly as I would like. I definitely was hoping to be around 200 pounds by the beginning of this year and only need to really lose 10. Uh, but it is what it is. I love food. I need to make better choices. I've been asked many times to discuss my diet. Uh, you know that the end or beginning of last year in 2021, I switched uh, to a whole foods plant-based diet meaning I was just kind of cutting out processed foods and eating only plant-based foods, not necessarily vegan, but uh, just whole foods, plant-based, trying to eat as clean as I could. Did that for about, I think, seven months. Went really well, and it just the baseball season hit and traveling and all that stuff with baseball, it just got to be very hard to keep that, that up with the traveling, with the family, and I kind of fell out of it. Um, and I think that probably contributed to a lot of my uh, plateauing on the weight loss. I do really well when I eat clean. That just makes sense. When I eat more fruits and vegetables and I'm cutting out the processed foods and not eating any kind of fast food. While I'm not still eating that diet, the whole food plant-based diet, I'm still eating vegetables, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits. Um, I need to start cleaning my diet back up again, which I'm hoping to do. Uh, me not being completely, uh, not completely adhering to that diet doesn't mean I don't completely believe in it. I 100% do. I feel the difference. I could feel the difference when my diet started to slip. I've done this enough to know that whole food plant-based diet is eating a lot of raw uh, fruits and vegetables. 
is what's best for me. It's healthier. I feel better. I've done this so many times. I don't, it's not a question if it's better. It is a fact. I've just done it too much. I know how my body feels. I can feel the inflammation. I can feel how clear my mind gets. I can feel how I'm less groggy in the morning. I can feel how I crave coffee less. I can feel how the performance when I'm running is easier. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people get very, uh, let's just say combative about their diet choices. You know, they got the people who are keto and they pick all these different diets and everyone just gets bent out of shape as though if you're attacking the way that they eat, honestly, do what you want to do. That's, you know, we all have that choice, whatever feels good for you. I do know what the long term health benefits of eating a whole food plant-based diet is undeniable. It just is. It's not a short term solution. It's not a quick fixed to abs in 60 days. It's not that. It is a healthy inside out approach to health and nutrition. It's not about putting yourself in a, in a state of ketosis so that you can burn more fat temporarily, but at the expense of your overall health long term. That being said, I need to get my act together because it is me who's eating the wrong foods and not um, eating as clean as I should be. So that's that. I've been asked a lot about that. I still consider that to be my main diet, my main focus, even if I've backslid into not following it. That's still going to be always be my focus. That's never, ever, ever going to change. So hopefully I get my act together. And I think I could see the difference between when I was eating healthy. If you look at the beginning of, of 2021, looking at the videos, I think my skin looked better. I just, I think overall, I just felt better. But... <laughs> You know, I'm not getting any younger. There could be something to do with that. Anyways, all right. Training's going well. Week four in the books. Race week is this week. I'm in my taper right now, and I'm just trying to kind of eat clean this week, eating lots of fruits and vegetables this week. Got them at work, so I could be eating them there. Uh, looking forward to the race. Not looking forward to the mud. Uh, it's rain. I think it's supposed to rain Thursday, Friday. The trails are going to be a sloppy, muddy mess. It's going to be cold. I think the high is going to be like 36 or 38 that day. So, you know, not bad for racing, but it's just, it's going to be messy. And um, yeah, I still got to figure out the math on my, my loop. So that's that. Wish me luck. Hopefully um, I'll do kind of a live uh, the next Monday after the race. I'll do a live hangout and we can just talk about the race live with all you. I miss you all. I miss the live broadcast and hanging out with the Motivation Theory running community and those Monday Night Lives. I'll see y'all in the live. I got to put that out there in the universe. I'm going to do a live Monday. Hopefully, <laughs> I don't have to back out. But accountability. I'm going to hang out with you all Monday night. I'll see what time. I'll put it out there in the world. I usually send a uh, broadcast out so that everyone can, can click, you know, remind me so it'll pop up uh, when it comes up because I know no one's used to it being there because it's been so long. It's been a long time. Wish me luck. I see eight. This Saturday, starting at 7 a.m., I'm going to be running for eight hours, hard as I can. Let's go. Let's go. If you want to see my recap of last year's IC8, go ahead and click right there. I will see you in that video, and you can kind of hear uh, my thoughts uh, during and after the IC8 last year. Click on the video. I'll see you in the next video. All right, later.